Welcome back to Hannity. Now, despite suffering a devastating loss in last year's election, Hillary Clinton won't go away. Now, the two-time failed presidential candidate is out with a brand new book entitled, What Happened? This weekend on CBS, Clinton previewed her new book and not surprisingly blamed pretty much anything and everything under the sun for her loss, except herself. Trump happened. What's this? Who I give a great deal of respect for, like Nate Silver, burrowed into all the data and said, but for that Comey letter, she would have won. But even though that was the primary um, blow to my campaign at the very end, um, it has to be looked at in context with the Russians weaponizing information, negative stories about me, this whole WikiLeaks beginning to leak in early October of John Podesta's emails. Facebook was taking money from Russian companies to run negative stories about me. And then let's not forget sexism and misogyny, which are endemic to our society. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Here with the reaction. Fox News anchor attorney Greg Jarrett Salem, nationally syndicated radio host Larry Elder. Greg, I'll start with you. Let's see. Russia Comey WikiLeaks fake uh, news, Facebook, voter ID laws, sexism, misogyny, and the only thing she didn't mention in this case was she was an awful candidate, the right-wing conspiracy, and right. Donald Trump happened. That didn't come up at all, you and know, she was a horrible candidate. I keep a running tally. It's now up to 26 uh, people and events and conditions she's blamed. Psychiatrists <laughs> have a term 26. for what she does. Yeah, it's called projection. It's when you're utterly incapable of accepting personal responsibility, you blame others because you view yourself as a chronic victim, very much like Richard Nixon when he famously said in his second Watergate speech, I accept responsibility and not the blame. And like Nixon, all of the scandals that are synonymous with the name Hillary are self-created. Nobody forced her to set up her private email server. Nobody forced her to pocket $225,000 from Goldman Sachs. Nobody forced her to use her foundation like a personal piggy bank that smacks of influence peddling and self-dealing. She did it all on her own, but she's utterly incapable of the courage of honest self-reflection. That's so well said. I wish I said it that well. Uh, that was really well said. There's your monologue uh, tomorrow. La uh, okay, I'll, I'll steal every word and I'll just plagiarize it and then she'll blame me. Uh, <laughs> well, she does blame talk radio and, and, of course, the Fox News channel. But, all right, Larry, the media narrative on her, she's brilliant. She is so right. smart. If you watch her campaign, she was boring. She was dull. She had no urgency. And she was basically a walking bumper sticker talking point <laughs> of every campaign the Democrats have ever run. I have never saw anything that inspired anybody. And then all of the scandals that Greg mentioned. And I don't know whether or not uh, Obama is on Greg's list, but uh, o Obama should have been because uh, <laughs> yeah. this election was a referendum of the uh, eight years of Obama. And he gave us the worst economic recovery we've had since 1949, the first recovery where we haven't had a single year of 3 percent growth. And the difference between 2 percent, which is what we've had, and 3 percent is a million jobs times the length of the recovery. So if Obama had done nothing but practice his jump shot, as I mentioned before, we would have had seven million more jobs. Now, what's she going to say? She's not made any criticism of any decision that he's made economically. How could she? Because she was OK with all of them, including the mandate, which Obama did not want uh, during the campaign. So she can't criticize any decision he's made economically. But when you ask Americans uh, who voted in, in uh, 2016, the number one concern was the economy and jobs. <laughs> Absolutely. And the forgotten men and women. Yeah. You know, I guess the media and and liberals, they, they love to diagnose Donald Trump's mental state. I'm listening to Hillary, and would it be wrong of me to say narcissistic personality disorder, Greg? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is, where's the introspection? Right. Self-analysis here. There, there is none. Wouldn't it be refreshing if she said, look, I ran an abysmal campaign. I was a lousy candidate. I never truly understood what Americans care about. <laughs> I'm laughing. I, I never developed see, a message that resonated with voters. Again, that would require a measure of <laughs> honesty and self-reflection. And she just she can't acknowledge the truth. And she never will. And Sean, right, she could have right said, there. yeah, Larry, she, she, she could she could have said my husband governed from the center. He cut capital gains. He did the Welfare Reform Act of 1996. Uh, my boss governed from the hard left. But she can't say that.
<laughs> All right, stay right there. We're going to have more with Greg and Larry right after this break. And also coming up tonight, a blockbuster interview, 60 Minutes, White House former chief strategist Steve Bannon making major headlines in his first television interview since leaving the White House. We're going to play you the highlights. Also, the man that killed bin Laden and a good friend of mine who lost her brother, one of the pilots on 9-11, 2001, straight ahead. Hey, welcome back to Hannity. So last night, 60 Minutes aired the first TV interview with former Trump White House chief strategist Steve Bannon. Now, since he left the White House, that is, during the sit-down, Bannon attacked the Washington establishment hard. By the way, they deserve it and so much more. Let's take a look at this. The Republican establishment is trying to nullify the 2016 election. That's a brutal fact we have to face. They do not want Donald Trump's populist, economic, nationalist agenda to be implemented. It's very obvious. The drain the swamp thing was, was Mitch McConnell was day one. Did not want to. Did not want to go there. Wanted us to back off. Do you and accept no a, responsibility for war, the failures of this administration? When you say failures, it's eight months in. Give me a failure. Bro, Obama didn't have Obamacare for the first eighteen months. You're holding him to an unfair standard. Trump went around the room and asked people the percentages he thought of, of still winning, and what the recommendation. And Ryan started off, and Ryan said, "You have uh, you have two choices. You either drop out right now, or you lose by the biggest landslide." in American political history. I was the last guy to speak and I said, it's 100%. You have 100% probability of winning. And that's the first time- But you time. seem to have done that at every point in the campaign. When he was in trouble, asking him to double down on his rhetoric, double down in terms of appealing to his base. Appear appealing to the American people and to the working class people in this country, absolutely. I don't think there's any doubt that if James Comey had not been fired, we would not have a special counsel, yes. So we would not have the Mueller investigation. We would not have the Mueller investigation. We would not have the Mueller investigation in the breadth that clearly uh, Mr. Mueller is going. Someone said to me that you described the firing of James Comey. You're a student of history as the biggest mistake in political history. That would be sure. probably, that would probably be too bombastic even for me, but maybe modern political history. As we continue with Larry Elder, Greg Jarrett, you know, Larry, I, I talk about five forces against the president. One of the five forces is the Republican establishment, weak Republicans, the, the never Trumper Republicans. Uh, and then I watch Mitch McConnell. Well, the expectations were too high on health care. I agree with Bannon. They are not a positive force for change, and they're deeply involved in the sewer and swamp. Thoughts? Well, for seven years, they've been talking about repealing and replacing Obamacare. Uh, and the reason for the unification was because of Barack Obama. Barack Obama is no longer there. Now the Republicans have been exposed. A number of these Republicans are not true fiscal conservatives. Uh, they don't really believe in repealing Obamacare. They believe in repealing it and replacing it with another government scheme. That's the problem. Many of these guys are not people that are truly principled. Uh, and the fact that Obama has gone away now shows this. Uh, and, and Trump, unfortunately, is the vehicle for this. Look. Donald Trump won. These guys did not expect him to win. They have no idea what to do with him. He's not a conventional politician. He is, in fact, a populist, as Stephen Bannon has pointed out. All right. Let me go to you, Greg. Um, I disagree on, on the Comey part of what Steve Bannon said. And here's why. If somebody's so unethical and so conflicted, and now we know the fix was in. He was, before interviewing Hillary or all these witnesses, he was already writing her exoneration. That's not equal justice under the law by any measure. Comey should have been fired a long time ago. He usurped the authority of the attorney general. Uh, he broke all the rules in making his public announcement. And then he, he blatantly misinterpreted the law. And I never understood, like you, how he could exonerate Hillary Clinton given the plethora of incriminating criminality. Uh, now we know. Uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee has come up with a document, a statement that Comey authored two months before he ever interviewed Hillary Clinton or her top aides, exonerating her. Now, how is that possible unless he was told to do it or he decided to do it on his own? But either way, it's interfering with the due process of law. That is obstruction of justice. And there ought to be a special yeah. counsel other than his good buddy, Robert Mueller, to open an investigation to convene a grand jury and decide whether James Comey has committed crimes, including obstruction of justice. Well, but Greg, I mean, he got he, the record. 
Go ahead, Larry. I was going to say, Greg, Greg, he didn't have to be told uh, what to do. Obama <laughs> said on several occasions right. he didn't feel Hillary had done anything. I've known her for a long time. Which is why no I intent. suspect Loretta Lynch. And that's why she ought to be under oath and ought to be the target of a second special counsel. Because it looks as though promises were made to the Hillary Clinton campaign. Were they made by Loretta Lynch? What happened on the tarmac inside that plane with Bill Clinton? Good questions. Uh, even James Good Comey questions. said the reason he took it over was because he was suspicious of the motive and actions of Loretta Lynch. But all trails, Greg, lead, I mean, lead to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. All trails lead to Barack Obama. <laughs> That's why this investigation went supernova. That's why it went away. Yeah, you may be right. I still, I think, you, I think there's something to that. But the bottom line is, I don't think we're done with the email server scandal. I don't think we're done with Comey, with Lynch, with Ukraine election interference, nor right. Uranium One. Or, by the way, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. All right, guys, thank you both.